is vulnerability. There are, now, granted, the less money you have, the more vulnerable you are. But vulnerability does not wear a color, does not have a bank book. Everyone, regardless of color, is going to face some degree of vulnerability at some point in their lives. And the instant you're vulnerable, you fall between the cracks. And the problem is that when you fall between the cracks, you fall invisibly. So, the first thing that I'd like, if someone would like to recount either their personal experience or the experience of someone that they know who is under the gun doing everything that they can, but their benefits just don't add up because they are enough. A lot of us, I mean, by the time I saw this situation, where I'm having to fight for stuff as well, and it is red tape, it is long lines, it's just unimaginable. And disabled, whether it's mental, physical, or emotional, had to go through this trauma <laughs> of getting services that they are entitled to. So, you know, whether it's a veteran, whether it's a mother who got sick and whatever, and couldn't provide for her children, it doesn't matter who it is, because there's not enough programs to help them be effective mothers, to be effective parents for their children. And there's a the biggest point about that. She's doing this, and she, she's a little help, and she's trying to get money to help feed her children, or whatever. population is being picked on. Imagine somebody's coming to a senior, somebody that's thinking, not thinking hard, said that she's going to have this reverse mortgage. That's a scam. Reverse mortgage is like taking advantage of the poor, taking advantage of a person that has a piece of property, and then giving this reverse mortgage, and now they have this high interest rate, they can't get out of it. What I'm saying is, is all of those predatory things on our seniors, okay, predatory lending on people that are not well educated about financing and how to properly read the fine lines, not having attorneys to be able to, like John said, to look at this stuff, all creates this problem and this secret fund of us not being able to build wealth. Okay, this is what's causing an erosion, an erosion of economic wealth yes. in the black community harder than any other community the Latino. I have a problem with the need for a lot of those services and the reason why the need economics. That's not a major problem. Social security should be to everybody who works and puts. That's their money. So I'm going to need Social Security alone. But the food stamps have to have those because we have no other choices. So economics are our concern as opposed to the benefits that you're talking about. If we had the funds, we wouldn't need What is your name? Connie Burton. One of the biggest problems that I'm hearing, like constantly, is people's uh, basic income is not enough to keep up with rent. Like in this city, we have a, um, a there's a big problem with affordable housing. And so some apartment complexes is asking that people have four times the amount that their actual subsidy even give them. So whether it's Social Security, AFDC, or whatever, poor people is having a very, very hard time just simply trying to find a place to live based on their income. Because when you say service and benefits, I like that. But in essence, a service that we have failed, a benefit that we have failed, that we have mandated to give people the education. And when we look at the kind of money that is being placed in the education, and we look at our young people coming out of school without the food, and I will tell you that we have a board of governors in the state of Florida who has clearly told the universities if they don't have the 
point on GT and they didn't pass the SAT and they didn't pass the ATP, they cannot come to these four year colleges. Let them go to remedial work in community college, yet he's taking the community college and he made them into four year colleges. It's a game that's being played and we have to determine what is the benefit and what is the service we deal with. And until we address education adequately and we start really teaching our young people from the, I'll say from conception until they get out of college so that they can overcome some of these problems. And that's why I think we need to hear what the folks have to say because it's, it's I know when you go with service and benefits and the shortcomings, but some of us wouldn't be in that position if we weren't allowed in the shortcomings to the class. So we have an opportunity as a group of people right here, ground zero right here in Tampa, to say we're going to preserve this community. We're going to bring our kids, whether they have a high school education or a PhD, we're going to create businesses and industry, we're going to support them. They will have now an opportunity that they have. such a wonderful venue and with such caring people and with the tradition that the NAACP has as far as social justice. We've heard examples tonight of just how vulnerable people become invisible. So there are a whole lot of acknowledgments that I'd like to make. First and foremost, to my friend Pastor W. James Faber, everyone associated with the Ewan Baptist Church, I think it is Former President Dr. Carolyn Collins, of course, the Hillsborough Chapter Executive Committee, certainly Pat Bruce, who has provided invaluable support to make tonight's forum possible. And I'd like to thank my colleagues with Pastor Tom Patrol, Jerry Neely, and of course, my, my good friend uh, and, and partner. Why don't you stand and introduce yourself? You deserve your own special Willie Dixon just had to have him introduce himself because his voice speaks volumes. I also want to thank the people who are not only here tonight, but who are enduring the shortcomings that come from inadequate service.